Oh, if the DA dreams about the free market, the EFF dreams about an all-powerful Father Christmas state that will deliver everything and anything to everybody overnight. And let me tell you, it's not simple Mao suits of the 1960s they want for all. It's Louis Vuitton red overalls. Nationalized, they say. Nationalized and hey presto, hey presto, everything gets solved. Now, this is idealism of the worst sort. The EFF claims to be Marxist. Where is the historical materialism? No assessment of the historical juncture, of the concrete economic and political terrain, of the domestic and global forces, balance of forces, of the strength of the state, of the readiness of the working class and its allies for socialism. And where exactly is the EFF socialist struggle, working class base? Where's the trade union movement? Where's the workers? Where in the world? When did Lenin and Marx say it is the youth that will be the revolutionary motive force for socialism? Not Lenin, not Marx, and not the other great hero. The the great Franz Venon never said that. So, so, why this youth fundamentalism? Everybody over the age beyond Malema's age is a, a reject, is a hack. Yet they admire China. What's the average age of the Central Committee or the government of China? Fund of order. The EFF is voluntarist. The Fund EFF, the EFF. What's your point of order, honorable member? Can, can we ask this demoted member of parliament to say honorable Malema, it's law here in parliament. Okay. Must respect us. Mr. Malema is acceptable. Mr. Please. Malema. Okay. Yes. Yeah, All right. Okay. All right. The EFF is volunteerism with no foundation in materialism. This idealism, this volunteerism is closely linked to its populism. And this, this populism is closely linked to its militaristic posture. There is no armed struggle. We are a democracy. They're in parliament. Why do they have as the head a commander in chief? Where's the internal democracy? Who is he commanding? Towards what end? No clarity, right? He thinks, he thinks, order, he order thinks, members. he was too young to be in the armed struggle, rightly. I have no doubt he would have taken part. But, but he thinks that if you fire a rifle in the air at the EFF rally, that makes you a soldier. Now, EFF, let me tell you, is all tactics and no strategy. Normally, your tactics, as we all know, and he knows, he comes from the national democratic tradition, Comrade Malema. Why is it that you don't accept this, please? You see, you have a strategy overall, and you subordinate your tactics to it. No, no, no. The EF is tactical. Everything is tactical. So they swing from one extreme to the other. Identity crisis. So one day they're opposing the public protector. Next day they're supporting the public protector. We don't know what's going on. One day they're opposing state corruption, or, or, or state capture, as we call it. Next day defending the perpetrators of that corruption. One day, one day they're supporting you know, for example, let me ask you, can you respond, Mr. Shivambo, when you speak? The state is weak. The state-owned enterprises are weak. Even the president and the minister of public enterprise says that. What sort of state is going to be able to take over property completely and disperse it, Mr. Malema? Think to let's engage around that. There's somebody else who's going to deal with the land issues. I've got only 254 minutes. So you can be technically flexible, technically flexible, but it must be part of an overall strategy, right? Now. The EFF claims to be Marxist, in what sense you can't tell. Like the DA, you two parties are the opposite sides of the same coin. Both suffering from an identity crisis, both don't know where you're going because Mr. Zuma is not here anymore. Now, <coughs> which is not to say, President, we don't have our own internal problems. It's there, even the peasants in outer Mongolia know it, and the frozen citizens of Alaska know it. And we have to do something, Mr. President. You and the Deputy President and the SG, wherever he is, I hope he's listening. Or at least somebody will convey it to him. Now, let me put this to you. We are a, no, 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 let me finish. I'm about to finish, you'll be rid of me. Now look, look, we're a national liberation movement. We're not a typical party in a cohesive sense of DA and EF, EF are meant to be. We are a broad movement of all classes and all strata of the population. And we're in alliance with the Communist Party, mercifully president, and, the, and Kosatu and Sanko. So it's obvious we can't be ideologically cohesive, Mr. Malema. You know that in the way you could be and the DA could be. So what's your reason for not being ideologically cohesive? DA, I don't know, you're a party. <laughs> but you know what? We, we respect the free market. The president has gone overboard and the deputy president and the ministers. We believe the free market has a role to play. 
We are committed to the private sector. We are not frightening them away. It'll be foolhardy and anti-Marxist even, President, uh, 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 the General Secretary of the Party, in other capacity, you'll agree. Now, look, we're saying we want a national democratic revolution advanced, consolidated, and deepened. We want a national democratic society in which there's both the market and the state. That's why we reject some of what they say. Certainly everything they say and some of what they say. The market and the state, right? That's what we want, a cooperative relationship between them. And we are saying we can't do it on our own as the ANC. We need all of you, despite our differences, despite our differences, despite what I've said here, because I was provoked by Ms. Chirwa more than Mr. Malema. Mr. Malema, by the way, no, 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 Mr. Malema, I was going to be very conciliatory, Mr. Malema, because I saw you on TV, and obviously I googled you because I had to do the sweeping. You are very much more temperate today than you were in the media. But I can see now you put Ms. Chirwa to do the work, right? Now, now, as I know it, as I know it, Mr. Malema, Mr. Shivambu, you're the chief poop of your party. As I know it, when I came in 94, a maiden speech, you don't interrupt, but in return, the maiden speaker... Order, order Deputy Speaker. I've only got 13 what's seconds. What's order, point speaker. Of order? No, he yes. must stop undermining women. No, no, no. Honorable no, Chiwa no, is no, capable no, of no, speaking no, in this Honorable parliament. member, what's your he, point of order? No. You, you, <laughs> must, you must never undermine women, Chief. No, Please. No. Honorable member. Honorable, Honorable Chiwa is better than you. That's yes, why you got demoted. Honorable member. You got demoted by your own party. Honorable member. Stop that, Chief. Honorable member. That's why you ran away from SNC. Honorable member. I run away from I, remain, I remain a member of the Politburo. Uh, apparently, this man who is speaking, his name is Yusuf. I don't think uh, he fully realizes uh, the potential that socialism is holding. And he's, uh, from the way he's talking, he's a somebody who is really benefiting from, from capitalism. As you've heard, he was once demoted from the parliament. I don't know why he was demoted, not from the parliament, but from one of the parties. So he's a demoted uh, member of parliament, if there's something like that. However, uh, socialism and capitalism are two different and they're opposing economic systems. You see, capitalism is what is affecting South Africa. As per Malema, he says capitalism affects South Africa. And so South Africa needs to employ another tactic, another way of reviving economy, another way of bringing economic justice. And that's why Julius Malema is always about communism. However, he was attacked by, uh, by this man who thinks he knows it all. And nobody knows really all, you know. He is complaining that the young, the young. So I, I noticed that even he didn't have enough points to give. He was just throwing insults at Malema. He was trying to portray his anger. That is what he was trying to do. Socialism should be given a chance in South Africa, according to what I understand. Because capitalism, we've seen what capitalism has done to the economy of South Africa. We've seen how when power is concentrated in the hands of a few, what happens? So communism is a, or socialism is a method, what is an econ economic system that is going to ensure power is distributed equally among uh, the people. So not uh, it's the, the 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 economy is not in the hands of individuals or uh, of or in the hands of private institution socialism is going to ensure uh, industries um, companies land are in the hands of the state and the states uh, it's now upon it to ensure that uh, these resources are equally distributed because we really do have economic injustices in south africa and the people who are really really affected are not uh, any other people other than the black people of South Africa. And so Julius Malema is trying to bring peace. He's not trying to bring a destruction into the economy of South Africa, but to bring equality and bring peace. You know, Africa, Julius Malema is the voice. Julius Malema, Julius Malema, Julius Malema, that Julius, Julius, everywhere in Africa he is known. The other day he was in Liberia. The other day he was in Ghana. The other day he was in Kenya. The other day he was back at his home in South Africa. So what's special about uh, Julius Malema? Julius Malema is an African leader who is very vocal. He stands for Pan-African values. He stands with the same values that our forefathers, uh, Pan-African forefathers, uh, Kwame Nkrumah, Jomo Kenyatta, Nelson Mandela, Jamal Abdel Nasser of Egypt stood with. One African, one union. Haile Selassie, one Africa, 
one union. The same message that Malema is always trying to speak. Malema cannot finish a speech without mentioning the name of Pan-African and, Pan and, and Africanism. Nationalism, Pan-Africanism. As much as he is a nationalist of South Africa, he is also a Pan-Africanist. Most of African leaders, they end at being national, nationalist. But it should transcend the borders. It should be a Pan-Africanist. Because Kwame, uh, the president of Ghana that we have right now, Nana Akufo Addo, uh, while he was uh, making a, a speech in Ghana one time, he told the black Americans, outside, uh, outside Africa, I see a black person. I don't see a Senegalese. I see a black person. I don't see a Ghanaian. I see a black person. I don't see a Kenyan, not a South African. But he sees one person. He sees an African. He sees a black person. So it's really important that we appreciate Pan-Africanism, not nationalism only. Of course, you can't be a Pan-Africanist if you are not a nationalist. If you are a Pan-Africanist who is not a nationalist, then you are lying. Okay, Malema was making a conversation in Africa, in South Africa. As you know, South Africa also is a multiracial continent. Another history for another day, or in the previous videos, I did explain how these people got into South Africa. So South Africa, in a nutshell, has the Indians, has the uh, Euro two kinds of European, don't, majorly. We have the Africaners, people from Dutch, people from uh, Netherlands, and then we have the Britons, who are the British. Remember, it is the British who colonized South Africa under a direct rule. They had a company with, that was named Imperial British South African Companies. That one you have to understand. So we have three people. The Indians, the Africaners, uh, the Africaners and the British are Europeans, and then we have the Africans. So we have four races, but I can say uh, only one race was born in Africa naturally, or in Africa, who are the Africans. These people came as settlers, some, some came as railway builders, some came as... You know the story. Now, one time, Julius Malema is in the court and he's making a, there is pan-Africanist conversation. And these, these are somebody who is also tough, you know? You know, Malema never talks and uh, somebody is pere pere, you know? <laughs> Malema talks and everybody listens. But one time he speaks and someone else's, you know? Another voice in the dark side of the corner. Huh? The dark corner, a voice is heard that is countering what Malema is saying. Nobody speaks or nobody so far, I've not seen anybody. Who can challenge Malema in the, in the courtroom or in the parliament? Who am I speaking of? I'm speaking of Yusuf. Yusuf is an, is an Asian. He has the Asian ancestry, the Middle Eastern ancestry. He was able to challenge Malema with capitalist ideas. Malema is more on socialism and this our friend is more on capitalism. So he was able to challenge Malema to see how strong Malema is. Malema, our guy, did not fail us. Malema defended himself. He defended the Africans. And uh, does not matter who won. I know Malema won, but it does not matter who won. What matters is human rights are appreciated. The minorities are appreciated. The majority are not oppressed. That is all. The black majority in South Africa are not depressed. The black majority in South Africa suffer most suffer most and it's their continent it's so funny it's so sad you know the indians are having privileges the white people are having privileges the person who is not, a, who is not having a privilege in their own country is the african so bad so bad so bad so bad even the indians when you go to india uh, people suffer there a lot we here we are oh uh, you are cute you have money but when you go back to their home they suffer a lot Everywhere people suffer. Even in the USA we have slums. So when they come here we shouldn't uh, we should be all the same. We should be all the same. The only person who should be worshipped is God, the most high God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Okay, enough with the preaching. Let's dive into the video and see what Malema has to say. Then I'll get back during the end of the video where I will give you my critical analysis of the video well what happened the reality is they could muster only a 2.5 percent increase 
over the 8.2 result in the 2016 local government election. Now get the match point right. You have so many PhD people. Point of order. Uh, they are only 40% away from being a majority. Only What's your point of order? It's uh, unparliamentary to deliberately mislead the House no. about the losses Honorable of member, the ANC you can't. and the gains Honorable of member, the EFF. If you say, Look at the benches, brother. Honorable, Don't be overwhelmed by your ego. Honorable member, That's why you are in the NCOP that's fine. and not Honorable in here. Member, that's fine. Because Honorable they members. lost. Yeah. Honorable Next Ndlozi. is old age home. Honorable Ndlozi. Honorable Ndlozi. Uh, order. Honorable Ndlozi, you can't say a member is deliberately misleading. That's unparliamentary and you must withdraw it. Withdraw it. You know that. You know the rules. I withdraw that he's no, no, no. deliberately no, 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 misleading no, no, no. the house. Unconditional, honorable member. I unconditionally withdraw and sustain the old age home destination. Honora that Honora is your destination. Honorable Ndlozi, can you kindly Please withdraw unconditionally. I kindly please withdraw and sustain Honorable the old member, age destination. Honorable member, this is the last time. <laughs> withdraw, please. Didn't I do that? I withdraw. <laughs> okay. Thank Are you, you happy, much. brother? Withdraw. Take your seat. What's your problem? But you know you're not right. I mean, that's an outrageous thing to say. What I am saying is this. If you do a maiden speech, as I understand it, uh, Deputy Speaker, you have to be temperate, and you don't criticize too much in your first speech. Now she did that, which is what was provoked. Uh, Isn't Honorable that Karim, norm? thank you very much. Your time has expired. Thank you. <laughs> Honorable members, it's now time for you to go. Honorable Muay, how can you be standing and drinking water like that? <laughs> Honorable members, take your seats. You must. You must follow the order. Much has been learned through this conversation. In as much as Africa is poor, there are systems that were put in place to make Africa poor. We have the capitalist, we have the socialist. Africa is not more of a socialist continent. It's a capitalist continent. We were not given the choice to choose between socialism and capitalism. It was forced into us. Capitalism was forced into us. Any country that decided that they want to go and choose socialism, they were oppressed. They were, they were sanctioned. You remember, somebody is leaving their house and coming to punish you in your own house. It's, a, it's insane. It's a taboo. It, should, it shouldn't. It should never ever be done, you know. Now, this thing is something that also Yoweri Museveni spoke of. Africans should, given, should be given the freedom. They should respect, not even give. We, we don't want it from anyone. They should respect our freedom. And for them to respect our freedoms, there are things that Africans we should also do. We should stop asking money from those people because they'll help us and they'll, they'll do bad things to us. They are, we are not equal partners to them. They are not like the Chinese. The Chinese, in as much as we've had some cases with them, they are not like the white people who, I give you this, you give me that, no. And it's always unfair. Back to Julius Malema and this Yusuf guy. Malema is a pro-socialist, Yusuf is a pro-capitalist, and you know Malema is trying to make South Africa a socialist republic, and people are like, oh, no, if you want South Africa to become poor, introduce socialism. See how socialism has failed in Cuba. Every now and then I get comments about no Evans you are wrong uh, you stand to be corrected uh, Cuba is not poor because of socialism Cuba is poor because of 60 years plus or rather 50, 50 years plus of uh, constant or uh, constant what there's this mean sanctions that are being placed by the US because Cuba is a neighbor of the US and Cuba is supporting socialism which was an, an idea which was an, an economic uh, system that was developed by uh, USSR, where they were being supported by uh, an old uh, Chinese leader who was called uh, Mao Tse Tang. If they want to say socialism is poor, or if they want to see where it worked, it worked in China, it worked in Egypt. Egypt uses two, it uses socialism and it also uses socialism. 
you know uh julius malema apart from socialism he was arguing on the basis of africans being respected in africans in africa because that yusuf he was representing a certain group of people malema is representing a certain group of people now we are on the side of malema because we are africans malema is an african Yusuf is on the other side. I don't know who is he representing, but you can make a guess by yourself. So it's high time Africans we find or Africans we support somebody who supports us, somebody who is not afraid of speaking, somebody who calls it for what it is, somebody who is not not afraid, courageous, brave like Julius Malema is coming forth, is telling us no, no, this is wrong. You can't continue doing this in South Africa. You can't continue doing this in Africa. I told you he's not only a nationalist. He's a pan-Africanist, you know. And this is beautiful. This is wonderful. At least we are seeing some, some, some light at the end of the tunnel. We can see some ray of sunlight coming in. The darkness seems to be ending. This is Julius Malema. He's not a messiah by any means. He is not. But he's somebody we can look up to. The Africans, the Israelites, from the Bible, the Israelites, not the Israelis. The Israelites needed uh, a king in the past because they felt they needed somebody who can guide them. In as much as God was against the idea, God gave them a king. It's good for people to have a ruler that will support them, that will agree with them, that will lead them, that will show them the way, that will fight for them. Julius Malema is presenting this opportunity to Africa and Africans in South Africa and Africans all over the continent and also outside the con continent. Again, I will repeat, he is a pan-Africanist. He is not only a nationalist. I'm glad that you will be able to appreciate socialism might work depending on who are placed on power. The EFF, when placed on power with the, you know, we know, I don't want to talk a lot of politics here, but when the EFF is elected, we know automatically that South Africa will be will becoming a country of socialism. Let's not be afraid of socialism because it has failed where. We should give it a try. It's something different that the oppressor brought with him. Let's try our own. Our own is socialism, which is being uh, implemented by Julius Malema. So that's all, that's all for now. Um, yeah, do support the channel, uh, support your boy. Yes, your boy, Evans from Kenya. And um, give the video a subscription. Um, subscribe, do give the video a super thanks, if possible. Um, support me on Patreon by becoming a member. I'll so much appreciate. I know there are so much, but choose all of them. Thank you and see you in the next video. Remember, stay African. Just, just appreciate being African. Just appreciate being African. I think uh, I love being African. So should you. <laughs>